In section 9.2, we calculated a 95% confidence interval for a sample mean. That generated a range in which we are 95% confident of capturing the population mean, a 95% probability that the mean will occur in that particular range. We'll use that here in section 10.1 to do a hypothesis test. In this case, I'm going to borrow data from research done on amphipods recovered from the bottom of trenches from around the world. Amphipods are very small creatures that live uh, at the bottom of these trenches, uh, uh, very deep. We're talking seven miles underwater, well over 10 kilometers underwater. And it was thought that they would be... Uh, pristine. There'd be nothing in them. They'd be clean. But they're, they turned out to be full of plastic particles, plastic generated by humans. Uh, plastic is a human-made product. So this surprised the researchers. On average, they found uh, 1.47 particles per amphipod globally. I pulled some data from the Mariana Trench, uh, Part of their expedition. They pulled up 10 amphipods and uh, enlarged it a bit and you can see here that uh, the amphipods all had some plastic in them. These are the number of plastic particles in each of 10 amphipods that were pulled up from the bottom of the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it was a surprise to the researchers certainly that they had all of these uh, in them. In them. And we'll use that data to calculate a 95% confidence interval. We'll go over here to the... Uh, I'll show you how we've done this. Now, some of this is done before. First of all, the global, the global mean here you can see is 1.47 at the very top. That's the global mean uh, that they achieved. For our particular sample, and here I've just run the average B2 to B11, uh, the sample size is 10, 10 amphipods. We have a sample mean in the Mariana Trench amphipods of 3.3 plastic particles per amphipod. And the standard deviation, which we've met before, B2 to B11, is 2.11. We learned about the standard error in the video in section 8.1, but I'll go ahead and I'll calculate that here by way of running an example. Remember, it's the, square, it's, it's the standard deviation, which I already have there, divided by the square root of the sample size. So I'm tapping with my finger to enter these values as cell addresses. I don't have to actually uh, manually type in the numbers. And using formulas can work a lot better because that way if I wind up changing the sample size because I made an error, the formula will automatically update with a new value. The T inverse is a new function from 9.2. You may need to review that video if you're not sure how we got that. But it does tell us how many standard errors I do need to go. I'm going to use a 95% confidence interval, yeah, sort of an industry standard, as I've said, 1 minus 0 0.95. But if you want a different level of confidence, you can certainly choose that. Uh, depending on the research you're doing. Basically, different fields have different standards, and 95% is used in a wide number of fields, but other fields may use others, and you just change that 0.95 number there if you have to. Notice, again, I tapped on the E2. I can see the green up on my screen shows that I highlighted 10, and so that's the correct N value. Be careful where you're tapping when you're doing this. Tap in the wrong place, and you'll get the wrong answer. The mean. Well, that's equal to the mean. That's up here. And I'm going to subtract the T critical times, that's right here, the standard error there. Check. That's the lower bound for the 95% confidence interval. What that means is for the Mariana Trench amphipods, I do not expect to see less than 1.79 plastic particles as a population mean for all of the amphipods on the bottom. And this is exactly where statistics comes into play. We can't measure all the plastic particles in all the amphipods on the bottom of that trench. We pulled up 10, that's what we have to work with. 
the upper bound same basic idea I take make sure I tap in the right place I want the sample mean I want to add plus the T critical right there times the standard error there and uh, I get about 4.81 as the upper bound I wouldn't expect the population mean above 4.81 and I wouldn't expect one below 1.79. So the, the question is, here the Marianas Trench, uh, the Marianas Trench does have a higher mean than the, uh, at 3.3, than the 1.47 global mean, but is that unusually higher? One way to look at this is to make a number line. I like to draw a number line to see these things. Here's a, a number line. The lower bound is at, is here at 1.79. The upper bound is up here at, at 4.81. And the population mean is down at 1.47. The Mariana Trench ones that touched here, the Mariana Trench amphipods come from a population that has 1.79 to 4.81 plastic particles per amphipod. That's what we're saying they do not come from a population that is at 1.47 uh, plastic particles. That's not in our confidence interval. So these amphipods come from a, a population that is likely to have a much higher population mean. When we have the Expected value, that's what we call this 1.47. That was the value we expected. That has to be given to you. Uh, uh, that Someone has to tell you what the expected value is for this kind of hypothesis test. But we expected 1.47 to be a possible population mean. And our confidence interval rules that out as a possible population mean. Contrast that to the marble example, which we were working with. Uh, previously in earlier videos. If I pull up the marbles, we looked at the, in 9.2, we looked at a confidence interval for the first sample, for the first five marbles, and we said that it must run between 4.87 and 5.89. We knew, however, for these marbles, we actually already knew that the overall population mean was 5.2. That's over there. So let's take this and put this onto a number line. And here you can see one in which the population mean falls within the confidence interval. The lower bound is 4.87 and the upper bound is 5.89 grams. The population mean is 5.2. That falls in the middle of the range, right in the middle. That's an expected possible population mean. In this case, we would say that, yes, these marbles came from that population, which they did. I took the marbles from that population. This is coming out just as we would expect it would. Five marbles are taken from the population, so their 95% their confidence interval includes the population mean. That makes sense because we did pull those five marbles. With the amphipods, we didn't know whether or not they came from the global population of 1.47 plastic particles per amphipod, and we found out that the Mariana Trench has more plastic particles than the global average. Uh, this It's not clear why that is. Uh, that would take further research to determine why there might be more plastic particles at the bottom of the deepest trench in the ocean. Maybe because it's so deep, maybe because it's sitting in a, the largest ocean, and maybe there's more plastic. A lot, not more research to be done there. If I return to the spreadsheet for a moment, you might recall that I had originally pulled in section 8.1 about 10 samples, and I'll link to those videos below. I can actually, using a spreadsheet, construct the 95% confidence intervals for all 10 of the samples. And to make it visually easier to comprehend, I've charted those down here in a chart. 
and you'll see sample one the one that I the number line that I just showed you here this number line I've turned it by 90 degrees vertical and put the population mean as a horizontal line in the middle for sample one and two this the 95 percent confidence intervals include the population mean but look at sample three right there sample three does not quite meet so this is this is a sample you see sample three up here that runs from 4.85 up up to 5.15 that's the upper bound on the 95 percent confidence interval you can see the formula running down here it does not include the population mean and that that happens sometimes now bear in mind the marbles did come from the population so what happened what happened is even if you take a sample from a population that sample might not always include the population mean there will be times where due to random chance it does not that's underneath this idea that we have only a 95 percent confidence of including the population mean you might think well just increase your confidence move up go to a hundred percent you can't get to a hundred percent a hundred percent isn't available the normal curves that we've been working with they don't allow us to get to a hundred percent if we go back and take a look at these confidence interval distribution curves there's a subtlety to this 100% would mean carrying this out farther, this purple line here, carrying it farther to the right. But no matter how far we go, these curves never quite meet the x-axis. 100% occurs at infinity, and so we can't get to 100%. This has an interesting impact far beyond the world of statistics uh, in some sense. It means that we can't be 100% certain of a particular result. And it means we will have some probability that we have missed, that we are wrong. It's not correct to say that we have a 5% chance of being wrong and we have a 95% chance of being right. That's not actually correct. What's actually happening is if we keep running these tests throughout our life, will be right about 95 percent of the time but on any one test we can't be certain whether we're right or wrong and that's what this spreadsheet is actually telling us if we had only one sample of five marbles we would draw a conclusion and for uh for uh ten of the nine of the ten samples we would say well that's a possible population mean but if we happen to be looking only at sample three if we saw only sample three the sample here we would say that it does not include the population mean we would be wrong and we would not know we are wrong if we don't know the population mean which we usually don't so we never know in one test whether we're right or wrong we're not 95% right and 5% wrong. We're simply right or wrong. And on, on sample three, we'd, be, we'd make a wrong conclusion. And on the other nine, we'd draw a correct, correct conclusion that the marbles did come from the population. So it's a couple bigger picture items from the world of statistics. You can never be 100% certain of, an, of anything. And on any one test, you really don't know if you're right or wrong. We use a 95% confidence interval oh, because over the long haul we'll be correct 95% of the time. There's also some other issues we'll tackle a bit in a later section. But this then lets us say whether or not a value comes from a possible population. So for our Marianas Trench amphipods, this data says these amphipods have statistically significantly more plastic particles at 3.3, an average of 3.3, than the global average of 1.47. There are more statistically significantly more plastic particles in the amphipods in the Mariana Trench than are found in the amphipods globally. 
which all live at the bottom of trenches. So that's how we use confidence intervals to do hypothesis tests. They tell us whether or not our sample could come from a population or could not come from a population. And while this example looks at amphipods from the ocean floor, we might be doing the same thing in looking at whether a particular group of people has an unusually high rate of coronary heart disease. We might be looking at whether a diet is in some way connected to impact on diabetes. We'd be looking at whether or not the sample values we got uh, concur with some known pre-existing population value. That's what this number is up here. It's our known pre-existing value. And so that's something that we can do with this form of hypothesis testing.